Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Virtue and Vice right here on the TheBigVitoBrand.com. And I am Virtue being joined once again by Robbie Vice, the remarkable one. What's up? Uh, I, I just watched the uh, tag team match that started off NXT TakeOver while we were getting ready, and it, it was not very remarkable. It was uh, NXT dive over and over and over and over. And just before we jump into this, I, I something that really irritates me. When people take... So it looks like Dakota Kai just was sitting on the shoulders of somebody and they jumped off the top rope outside of the ring and basically did like a modified doomsday device to her. 30 seconds later, she's in the match again, breaking up a thing like and she's fine. I, I think that's the biggest thing with wrestling right now that I just absolutely hate is that they just don't sell anything anymore. It's like 30 seconds later, everyone's immortal. Everyone's fine. It's just, it, and the thing is, is like, where do you go from there? This is why we have injuries. They just always try to outdo each other. And it's just, I don't know. But dude, other remember that, when uh, the, the DDT I, was like the finish? Yeah, dude, the DDT or the pile driver, which I know they aren't supposed to do anymore. Dude, even the, if you go back far. Or enough, a leg some drop. Of this, yeah, the leg, yeah. Or an right, elbow, elbow drop. drop. Right. Dude. Like the, the perfect plex would put people away. Now they just do like craziness. And this match sucked. This match was just really bad. I watched it while I was waiting for you to get ready. Dude, Karrion Cross is the most interesting person to me on that show. And he's not even on the show tonight yeah. unless he shows up. So I'm like, I'm not going to take NXT seriously until they push the right people. And like you said, I don't care about the spots. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of the ones who's up with them. And it's not good either, dude. They're just like, and and you could tell how choreographed it is. It's like it doesn't flow, and it, it looks like they're just waiting for the next thing to happen. Everyone's waiting. They're always looking over their shoulder. It's like very obvious. It's not. It's not good. And NXT takeovers used to be great because you know you had people like Becky and Charlotte, and you know Finn Balor is still there or Kevin Owens that could do this style of wrestling. But it's just like some people can't do it and they're just forcing it. But that's enough of me ranting. Uh, let's get into what we were uh, supposed to talk about tonight, I but guess. But wrestling has evolved, right? Left wrestling has behind, evolved apparently. and it's not about ratings anymore. And it's sure about isn't. it's about uh, clicks and uh, follows and likes. I mean, come yeah. on. Right. Dude, um, this is what I want to do for this show. Right here exclusively on the BigVitoBrand.com. Is you and I are both we're, we're gonna I'm sick of this Wednesday night war NXT AEW. It's war. not flying to me. <laughs> right. So we're gonna represent back in the day when it was really a ratings war, WCW and WWF. Okay. So just for shits and giggles, you can be WWE, I'll be WCW, and you and I are gonna be owners. And we're gonna start promotions that are gonna go head to head on Monday nights against each other. We're gonna keep this simple. Right, because fantasy booking it's for nerds. We want to get our point across of who you and I are going to build promotions with today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And today with today's wrestlers. And here's the criteria. We're going to pick two men, top two men stars, and, and we and you can choose from any promotions today. Okay. They could be semi-retired, that's kind of up to you type deal. Like I think you got to kind of pick them knowing they're probably going to work right so like right. cm punk's questionable here right we're going to pick two men two women a part-timer right because we got to have a part-time attraction so we know who falls in that category several people and then a tag team just well just one tag team you know obviously this would go beyond this but we just want to get the top who our top stars would be so we can drive this point across to the wrestling fans today who think this nxt vengeance day is producing stars OK, so with that said, I'm going to let you do the first pick and then <laughs> we'll just go we'll just go back and forth and, and you can and then we're, I'm going to write these down and, and we'll kind of see what people on Twitter think. I feel, like our list, I feel like our list will be similar. I mean, obviously, my first pick is the biggest. Well, we star can't take the same picks. Oh, so if you pick oh, somebody, so that's I can't get them. Each. Okay, we well, can't really, pick... Right. Like if you pick somebody, I can't have them work for me, too. Yeah. OK, well, then I pick Roman Reigns. I mean that's that's the that's the biggest guy in the world. So that's you you give me the option. I'm gonna take Roman all day. Bro. All right. So you're starting a promotion. Yeah. And you're taking Roman Reigns. Absolutely. Okay. So because you did that, I should just go ahead and take my part timer right now. But there there'll be a hand. You know, and actually I am. 
I am going to take my part timer first. And this could this could screw me, but I want to lock this guy in. So obviously Roman Reigns, um, even though SmackDown had its lowest ratings this week during the uh, Thunderdome era, anything you want to add to you picking Roman, or he's just that top guy in he's wrestling the guy, today? Man. He he has proved that he's the best promo in the in the world right now. He's the most interesting character in the world. He's durable. Um, he's a badass. He, he just pre- presents himself. Well, he has that, that, that lineage, that bloodline, man, that Samoan bloodline has been big for wrestling for a very long time. Good pick. So a great pick. <laughs> well, a good pick. Dude. I'm going to take Brock Lesnar as yeah. my featured attraction part-timer because I'm solidifying my big, um, what's the, I don't even remember star main event with Brock Lesnar. Okay. Right. Every year I know who's going to be in the main event or really close to it. Heck, maybe even other, maybe even bash at the beach, Brock Lesnar. Need I say more, right? Obviously the pandemic will be over when we have our promotions. Uh, I don't know how many years he has left, but at this point it doesn't matter because he's the part-time attraction and dude, when he shows up, he's badass and, and he can go and, he can wrestle smaller guys and guys like Roman Reigns. So I just wanted to make sure because you took Roman, I had this matchup. Brock <laughs> That's now, who I had the, written I mean, on You have a big one. field yeah. with part timers still. So it's not right. like you can't fill in the blank. Right. But um, back over to you. So we're going to go for our male superstars, right? You, you can pick another, your second male. You still have two female spots, your part time attraction, or a tag team. And a tag team can be two people put together like the WWE loves to do. Yeah. If you really think two people could work great as a tag team that maybe not even aren't, aren't a tag team right now. Yeah. You are the guy signing these guys, these people. Well, the next the next male attraction, I'm going to sign that because, let's face it, um, everything's created equal, but the men's division is what makes you money. I'm going to pick uh, Big E because he's huge. Yeah. He's charismatic. Yeah. Dude, you're hitting a demographic. Regardless, Big E deserves that spot. Now, yeah. some people, you know, this is interesting that you say him because I know you and me have kind of pushed him in our minds up to where we'd like to see him get pushed. And yeah. then we can start saying, yeah, we said long before anybody else, this guy should be out of the new day and be taken seriously. Uh, Mr. Tito, you know, he's like, dude, change your haircut, get out of the new day gimmick. So we're not alone. Yeah. Um, what will you do with him that WWE is not doing with him to make him up there at Roman Reigns' level? Just just quick little I, anything. I, I want I want his humor to stay, you know, out in front, but I want it to be toned back a little bit. I want him to be kind of how he was, you know, in NXT or when he first came up. He was kind of the heel. He was a little bit more serious. He kind of reminded me of of how they did the young Brock Lesnar thing. He was just he came out, he wrecked shit, and he left. Um, I think he could still have fun. It's just I want his character to be more based in reality. I want him to just be himself. Obviously, you're not some of the stuff he's just not always going to do. He's not always going to be so goofy with the pancakes and all the other stupid shit that he does. Um, but I think he's someone when it comes time, you know, he can do that, that the cocky smile. Well, I just he's he's just a giant guy. He's young. He's going to be in this business for a long time. And I think just with the amount of charisma he has, he could literally play any part in, in my up and coming company that I'm creating right now. I like that. So you got you got your two male superstars out of the way. And you know what? I'm going to select. I need one, right? Because I took Brock as my yeah. part time. I need to establish my top heel. And look, I'm di- I'm going to the well, right? I'm going to the, the Jim Ross OVW class of 2002. Randy Orton, RKO. Yeah, yeah. I put him over as the rest of the pandemic up until Reigns came in. He made edge, you know. His return looked pretty decent. I know the way some of those matches were was questionable with how long the the match at WrestleMania was. And then, of course, Edge got hurt on a reshoot from the world's greatest match. But things like that happen. But Randy is still, dude, I got to have my top heel. And I, yeah. I'm taking Randy Orton. I mean, dude, I don't – just his track record alone, and he still looks the way he does – and he doesn't flip and dive. So I think that even though he's older, he's still going to give me a lot of years. Right. I know he had some injury problems early in his career, but the guy, but he hasn't the last decade. Right. Cause he's working safe, safe enough to put edge in a feud with him. That's what WWE did. Sure. So Randy Orton is my top heel. Okay. So there you go. Back over to you. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go for my part-time attraction right now. And, and you just said his name and it's going to be edge. Edge still cuts the good promo. 
Uh, he can still work in the ring. He has a lot of fan support. He's that older veteran in the locker room that I think could pull people together, keep things in line. Similar to what The Undertaker did for a long time. I, I think Edge could be that dude. I think he could just just bring that stability and calmness. He's been there forever. And uh, again, if I'm making a promotion, uh, I saw what a lot of these marks were eating up, <laughs> you know, at the Royal Rumble and stuff. So uh, merchandise um, and again, promos and just getting people to believe in him. I think that's who I would bring in as my, my part timer for the company. All right. That's good because, you know, you got some nostalgia. You're feeding off some nostalgia there, too. And that's oh, yeah. that's a good um, I mean, you got the Peacock deal. I'm just trying to get back on TV with WCW <laughs> over here. Right. So trying to get a deal, maybe sweep uh, AEW's deal right uh, from under them with TNT. Because, uh, I, you know, Vince McMahon sold me the rights to WCW here. So. Right, right. All right, I'm going to pick my f- female star. And, dude, this was tough. Like, because I'm being cognizant of who's actually not a part-timer, you know, like I'm not going to say Ronda Rousey and I'm going to force her to work full-time. I already took my part-time attraction. I did not select her. So for my female, I'm taking Charlotte. Like maybe because I'm a Charlotte Mark and she's the female Roman Reigns, you know. Um, I'm not bringing Rick over, right? There, This is going to be Charlotte by herself. No need for dad to be out there anymore. WWE beat that drum to death. <laughs> Again, but yeah. I love the fact that she's – her work, I like her work, and I like the fact that if she is polarizing, if I do push her, there are going to be the smarks that hate it. Well, then I can use that against them because I can get a baby over against Charlotte that they're going to love no matter what when I want to build a baby face female superstar. So Charlotte, that's why I'm picking her. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, it does. It does <laughs> make sense. Now, if we're going to look at building a promotion, it has to be booked well. And I'm definitely taking out of retirement, forcing his ass up from the South is Mr. Jim Cornette. To, that's going to be your promoter booker because we do be get one of those. I forgot yep, to mention that's it. That's going to be my promoter booker. Dude, this is going to be a badass rivalry here because. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? And, and the biggest thing that you know you're going to get with Jim Cornette is everything's going to make sense. Everything is going to be balanced. The things that I don't like will be gone. The extra dives, the extra dumb shit, the stupid storylines. You know, it's just that's not my flavor. And I want this to be a a more serious version of wrestling. There's definitely room for humor. There's definitely room for a lot of the stuff. But with him at the helm, I think, you know, I, I just think that's 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 a key building block I need in my company. I need Jim Cornette in my company. Okay, that's a good pick. Now, I'm looking at me. I don't have to take my wrestling or my Booker writer yet because you already have yours. Right. And. The part-timers are done. So this is where I could really take an advantage over you and pick a tag team or a second female before you even take one. Yeah. So I'm going to skip over tag team just because, you know, like I said, I, right now I can't even tell you if I know which one I want to take. So I'm going to take a second female. Okay. And they're like, I can't think of any female outside of WWE except one person that I would like to have on my roster as polarizing as she is. Um, I'm going to take her before you do. That was my take Tess, I am going to take yep. Tess Blanchard because yep. I will make sure there's, I'm going to have the locker room like set straight and it's all business. And you know what, just like in sports, sometimes those polarizing athletes like Antonio Brown, get signed because Tom Brady takes him under their wing and he makes a comeback and scores a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And Tessa Blanchard, there you go. She with her and Charlotte Flair, I really like my the start of my women's division. Obviously these promotions would have wrestlers beyond what we're picking here, but we're picking like our what we're running with, our big headline marquee people. Well and I'm Tessa Blanchard can run I'm not gonna have her wrestle men, but her and Charlotte like Maybe Tessa, maybe it's time for her to be a baby face and that, you know, maybe Charlotte will be a baby face, but there you go. I took them. I took two women before you could take one. Well, I'm going to go ahead and snatch up my tag team of the future, which is going to be FTR. Okay. And you had to, because you could have Jim on TV. Exactly. And he could be out there and then he's going to, he's going to double out there for a manager for my FTR group. So that's, that's the tag team I'm going with. I think they're the most sound tag team in wrestling period. Um, 
And with Jim booking them, being out there with them, guiding them, I think they could actually bring tag team wrestling back to the to the forefront in fans' minds. Yeah, that's a good pick. Um, I'm going to take my second my second male star right now. I know it's kind of uh, it's locked you out, so it's not like I need to take this now. But the, you know, I need a baby face and like thinking of all all over the like the people from Japan. You know, I'd, I'd like to pick Jay White. But people over in North America, they don't know who he is yet. And so that would have to be something down the road. I need to build this company up first. Um, you know, Matt, Matt Riddle ain't that guy. I like him. You hate him. I'd never burn a spot like that. I'm really taking this seriously. Yeah. Um, I could pick a few different people from main roster WWE, right? Easy peasy. And I probably should. But I, I want this to be my top baby face out of the gates. Because I'm not going to let him have too much power backstage so he can focus on what he does out there in the ring. And I'm bringing the marks that like him with me so I can have – I'm not going to cater to them, right? I'm still, I still want to cater to casuals. But Cody, I'm bringing in Cody because I want the wrestling, the diehards, to still kind of be like, well, WCW, they got Cody. What does Robbie have over there? Robbie McMahon. So – because of Cody's traction with the marks, the diehards, but I still, and I know Vito has said this, that he was a small fish in a big pond in WWE and he floundered. Well, in WWE, it's still a lot of creative hurt you. Uh, Cody's proven to me enough. If pushed right, he could be a top baby face. And not that I would, you know, I got Lesnar, right? I do got Brock, but I'm going to take a gamble on Cody. Okay. I mean, well, would you say in AEW yeah, he's their best guy right now? I mean, he's the best guy that they have by a lot. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm taking. Yeah. I need something for that fan base, not to cater them, but not to. I don't want them to hate me. I'm. I'm trying to win them over before you win them over. See sure. what I'm saying? Well, so, I have bad news for you then, because uh, my <laughs> second tag team is going to be the Young Bucks. Okay. I, I, I personally don't care much for them. I think if Jim Cornette was in charge, he could rein some of that in. He's gonna they're gonna bring merch sales and they're gonna be my access to the internet itself. They're gonna have their stupid YouTube show. They're gonna bring more eyes to my product. The younger demographic loves them. They could be my baby face to go up against FTR. Their interactions with Jim Cornette on TV are gonna be absolutely gold. And I think that solidifies my tag team division. Yeah, and you it's funny how you waited so your two women last because you're like that's just gonna be in the <laughs> middle of my show and uh dude i'm very interested but you know who you're yeah. gonna end up picking so now it's gonna come back to me you know i gotta go i need two tag teams i don't even have one yeah. and this is one of those like i want to be creative on a tag team and put two guys together like what because you you picked straight up tag teams that are already together i'm gonna do that with my first pick just so i can get a tag team that's in there that, that does tag team stuff And that's Gallows and Anderson. I mean, um, I think they've been creatively crapped on everywhere they've went since Japan. And I'm going to make sure that does not happen. These guys are going to bring back their Bullet Club selves. And like I said, I want to be creative in my tag division, but I need to start. I need a foundation. And Gallows and Anderson are going to be those guys. So you now have two picks left. They both have to be women. So you're on the clock for a female wrestler. Uh, yeah, so my my female wrestler that I'm going to go with to solidify um, just the, the kind of the foundation of my entire women's division is going to be Becky Lynch because she's she's a popular athlete. Again, she can cut the promo. She's one of the four horsewomen. She can work and she headlined WrestleMania. I mean, whether or not that was because of her or not, she has a lot of clout and she's a fan favorite that i think people will pay money to see all right so there you go i figured you would have avoided her like me because you i didn't know how many babies she wanted to have but uh <laughs> um so my second tag team i'm putting this team back together Th- this is where uh you know and i did i not say this at the beginning it, it, as long as it makes sense to a point too did sure. not say you could put two people together that aren't a current tag team yeah rollins and Ambrose, or we're going to call Moxley. I'm putting them back together. You have Reigns. You have the best part of the shield, but I'm bringing Rollins and Ambrose. I'm calling Moxley now. 
in as a tag team to restore their glory from the Shield days. And it does give me flexibility because I could split them up and have two main eventers right then and there like WWE continues to do with tag teams. Not saying that I will do that, though. These guys have been around. They've been world champions before. They can work as a team again. So there you go. Uh, did I step over bounds there? What do you think with me doing that? No. No, I, 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 but I I'm specifically consider, having to use them as a tag team, right? As long as and, and at, I, least, see, I at least for the first year. Like, that's the I rule. I consider like, Daniel Bryan and Cesaro, to be 100% honest with you. Oh, okay. that, that was a consideration I had. So, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair game. Yeah, and, and when you took reins, I needed something of the shield, and that's that's what it has to be. All right, so you're going to finish your team here. Sasha Banks. Okay, so you got Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. And, and dude, I'm just looking at yours, and if we po- put this on a poll on Twitter, which I, we will do after the video and audio has been up for a couple of days because I want people to listen. I don't want them to just to see, oh, that's who they picked. No need to watch or listen to the video. Um, yeah, you got the – you got a couple sweet spots there, right? Like me taking Charlotte and Tessa Blanchard. My vision is there, but the current, you know, I'm going to have to restore their image. But there you, you go. You still need now, a booker. You still need I, a booker. Yeah, and I'm, because I knew I was getting it by default. Do we even know? I mean, you, you tell me who I'm picking because you know You're who it's going to be. You're picking Vince Russo. Yeah, Vinny Rue is going to come out of retirement. And, you know, when I look at Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Charlotte Flair, Tessa Blanchard, Brock Lesnar, Gallows Anderson, Rollins, Moxley, and Vince Russo style, and I know it's completely different than Cornette's, but this isn't going to be WCW 2000. That would make a really this, good this point, isn't too. Gonna be, <laughs> dude, th- th- this roster here in this promotion, it's not going to be the WWF Attitude Era. It- it's going to be when TNA was nothing and weekly pay-per-views built it up to, on the early days, a credible wrestling promotion you know it was never what wcw was to wwe yeah. but early tna man it, it was pretty exciting like it, samoa it, joe it was, and them yeah it really made ring of honor like mean something because it put those wrestlers on a national stage yeah, for so sure. yeah i'm gonna you know russo is gonna probably have that philosophy because you gotta remember it's not an established company with vince mcmahon he's writing for It's not jumping ship to WCW he's writing for. He's got to start this from the ground up like he helped Jeff Jarrett with TNA. And he he has a good track record from that, and that's why I'm taking him. So there you have it, Robbie. There are our teams. And we took a couple picks that were the, you know, today's niche fans' faves. You have to. But I I like them. And, you know, we are going to put these out there on the Internet in a few days, and I'm sure you'll get the popular vote, but – We'll have to see what people say. So anything. Well, I don't know. My young bucks will be heavily weighted against my Jim Cornette for the popular internet vote. <laughs> but he'll he'll book himself to be FTR's manager, and they'll go over. They'll beat him. So that's, well, that's what true. Do. Yeah. Hopefully, you don't have backstage turmoil though. They have well, they morale's have no... got to be like we need a morale meter. Who who is morale? Locker room's going to have a better morale. Like you got the Roman Reigns locker room Big meter e, though. Big E. I have Edge back there. Um. Yeah, I got some polarizing figures: Lesnar, Russo, <laughs> Randy Orton. I mean, or that, but that was young Randy Orton. But right there, you have it, Robbie. Well, here's the thing: here's some notable names, though, that I considered. I considered Jericho, MJF. I did uh, not consider Jericho. Um, I thought about making Jericho MJF one of my tag teams. To be a hundred percent honest with you, MJF, I did, but I feel like that would have been a guy I would have added later. Because, right. the, you know, AEW had, didn't build him up properly, so I figured you would have stayed away from him, too. And then that could have just been like a bidding war, you know, like a free agent deal. You know, we could offer more money than you and he'll come over. So, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I did not a, a lot of the AEW <laughs> roster. I mean, uh, um, Adam, who the fuck's the cowboy in AEW? Why can I never? I, he's Page. like so for Adam Yeah, Page. Adam Page, yeah. Uh, Adam Page is definitely someone that I consider. I, I thought about him for a second. You know, um, I was I was surprised you didn't go with Riddle. I, I felt like you would try to build him up to be something. Um, you know, like he would be one. Of, like like if we extended this to build a few more people to make it a bigger roster, I probably would be all over Riddle early after maybe this. We'll, maybe we'll revisit this after the polls come out. Maybe we'll add our mid card and some other stuff to this. And, Dude, we'll see. and people can say nerds fantasy booking. Dude, I picked Vince Russo and you picked Jim Cornette, okay, to write our shows, to book our shows. We're looking at this from a business of restoring what we liked in wrestling. 
We're not lo- like this is how we would love to see a promotion, not what AEW is throwing up at us. Right. So, all right, Robbie, that was good little good little uh, segment this week. Something different, you know. As I, said, I yeah. get sick, and it's been slow news, so I figured this changed up the monotony. So, go ahead and do your plugs, man. Yeah, guys, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at the Robbie Vice, criminally underfollowed. Give me a follow. Let's talk wrestling. You can also see me on NoDQ.com during our NoDQ reviews, um, and right here on the Big Vito brand, where we do our best show with just Virtue and I. Again, exclusive to BigVitoBrand.com. So. Yep, and you can follow me at Twitter, at Twitter. How about on Twitter, at NoDQ underscore Virtue. And I post everything there, so that'll take it all these other places. But for Robbie Vice, I am Virtue. This has been Virtue and Vice right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. We'll follow up on this, and we will see you next time.